Each main engine generates by itself enough thrust to maintain two four-engine Boeing 747s in flight. All three of the main engines at launch generate 1,254,000 pounds of thrust, which equates to 418,000 pounds of thrust each. This is the KU band communications antenna being stowed into the payload bay. This is used for the primary communications with the shuttle through the tracking and data relay satellite. And the payload bay doors of Atlantis were closed for launch in preparation for going to the vehicle assembly building. This is the external tank barge, the Pegasus, which has carried the external tank for this mission to the Kennedy Space Center. The barge is named Pegasus. And it's actually the same barge that was used in the Apollo program to bring the Saturn V first stage to the Kennedy Space Center. This barge also brings the tanks from the Michoud manufacturing facility in Louisiana to Kennedy Space Center. They are delivered to the barge turning basin, pulled in by a pair of tugboats from Port Canaveral, and then the external tank is offloaded and taken on a trailer over to the vehicle assembly building. The external tank is 154 feet long and 27 and a half feet in diameter. Empty, it weighs 58,500 pounds. Once in the VAB, it is then hoisted for the transfer aisle off its trailer, rotated to vertical, and it's moved into a test cell for final checkout. The tank is very thin. It's like a giant thermos bottle and only about a quarter of an inch thick. The tank capacity is 535,000 gallons. There we see the external tank in the checkout cell. Once it begins to flow fuel, it will be running through into the main engines of the orbiter at a thousand gallons a second going through these fixtures that we see here attached to the bottom of the tank. When the tank is full of propellants, it will weigh, instead of 58,500 pounds, a total of 1,668,500 pounds. The tank is mated to the twin solid rocket boosters. And for this launch, we move the stack with the external tank and the solid rocket boosters out of vehicle assembly building High Bay 1 over to High Bay 3. The water in front of the crawler there is to keep down sand and dust. And once it was moved back into High Bay 3, work then began to prepare the orbiter Atlantis for mating to the tank and the boosters. We moved it out of High Bay 1 so that stacking could begin on Space Shuttle Endeavor. This now is Atlantis being moved out of the orbiter processing facility hangar, High Bay 1. The move over to the vehicle assembly building takes about 20 to 25 minutes from the time it actually backs out of the hangar until it's over at the entrance to the VAB high bay transfer aisle. Once inside the transfer aisle, the lifting sling is then attached so that the orbiter can be rotated to vertical position. And that is the underside of the orbiter with its highly heat resistant thermal protection system tiles. Rotation to vertical there is nearly complete, but that the hoisting can then begin to lift it over the transom and 
into high bay three for mating to the external tank solid rocket booster stack, which awaits. Once mated to the tank in the boosters, we'll have a total stack weight of 100 and a total stack height rather of 184 feet as we see it here. And the rollout then began to launch pad 39A. Well, it'll take approximately six hours for the 3.8 mile trek to the launch pad. Atlantis's wingspan is 78 feet. The orbit itself is 122 feet in length. And as we said, the total height of the shuttle stack is 184 feet.